get together this little brush creek gathering this evening thank you god for looking over our brothers and sisters as they was out to, to make this journey and we also want to remember the sick and shut in that couldn't make it today god we want to keep them in our prayers please dear lord bless the uh, singers as they sing in your glory and bless the preachers as they bring the bread of life dear lord and all this we give thanks and ask in the name of your son jesus christ amen amen, amen. thank you brother one
sister's brothers will be singing round the throne in that land where no one ever knows again. And the Christians of all ages will join in the triumph song. Everybody will be happy over
Right Maybe you better just play. Right. Right. We can't really imagine that right now in this carnality that we're living in here yep. in the body. But we know it's going to be far better than this. Yeah. All the things that God has wrote about and told us. And, and we'll all praise the Lord together. Absolutely. Angels and all. Angels and all, yeah. That's a real good boy. song.
Washed all my sins away, I 
blood washed all my sins away. I know his peace, sweet peace, has filled my troubled soul. Yes, this one thing I know. Yes, this one thing I know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> even it out there. <laughs> That's what Brother Charlie do. He's even it out.
one there. I want to take this one. We'll do the back post of the one. There. I don't know about you all, but I am definitely time. I need a good time. Yep. Well, I found 
person was with a soul. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Oh, send it to me later. If, if, well, if you're not well, you're coming up and stabling me sign, ain't you? Yeah, well, <laughs> <tell me. laughs> Good job, Mom. I just know Dean don't know what, everything I can hook into. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to see it. Love you. Love you, too. Good. You got okay. a good deal with it? Well, I thought it was good. Soon as you go to the mayor, if you've got any advice you want to make, Of course, sorry, I got it on the layaway okay. page. So how many watts is that panel? One ten. Okay. It's foldable. It's yeah. Brother James with us this evening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 to remember him and his family. Yeah. What is yours? I'd like to certainly. I think it's a boy calling. He said that uh, his uh, tick and Billy's a little baby boy, and uh, he, they, he's got Lyme disease, and they're having a little time with him. Whose baby is it? Old, old ticks. Yeah. I didn't catch what he said. Oh, I do bless anybody else. Right. That won't tar us there. I don't know if he's going to. Remember our home? Uh, yeah. Remember my mom and her home? God bless you. Glad to be here with you, Brother Jeff. Good to be here, Brother Tony. If I live right now, I'll be paid for my trip. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stick around. Yeah, please. It's close a little bit. Anybody else? You want to yeah, remember Amy Dillon's uh, family. Her little girl passed away. Good. Good bless. Little baby. Anybody else? Continue to pray for uh, Jay Davis and his family. Yes. He's recovering now, but he's feeling some pain. He's the one that we mentioned a while back, prostate cancer, and they removed that and, uh, and those uh, lymph nodes. Yeah. And so, like you said, he's going to have a long process. So remember him and his family. And we pray. Anybody else? Remember, Pop, you don't care, Brother Charlie, and our family too. We lost him. It was sick. And uh, Pop sure would like to be in here. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the uh, bag's bothering. Of course, he's fighting that prostate cancer as well. Yeah. He starts radiation uh, Wednesday. So Wednesday. We pray the Lord that goes good. Remember him. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, Thank you, brother. Anybody else? Remember in my family, but my best friend did. I also would like to have a part in this prayer. It just ain't tight and enough on there, Paul. Bless each and every home. Okay? How do you tighten that up? Always remember our With lost his. people, especially the ones that's really no. showing interest. You know, God, he promised, yeah. he said, draw nine they to just me, keep and I will draw nine over. to you. And, and even the body of Christ, <laughs> a little pitch of it that's here, Brother Chris, when, when we see the movement of our loved ones that's trying to make things right with the Lord, it just enthuses us more than what they even realize and until that they get on this side and then they'll realize how good that it feels to see somebody give their life to the Lord because we know we've been over on that other side and we know that there's an end to that and it's eternal and punishment but we know in this that we've got now in Christ Jesus there's no end to it. It's eternal peace, joy, and happiness, life forever. Yeah. Manifold blessings in this life, sis, and everlasting life to come when life's over. So we want everybody to have that. And it's a free gift. The Lord Jesus Christ, he paid for it all. And all he wants out of us is to believe him and to love him back. Yes. He loves us first, but he wants us to love him back. And we sure do. Yeah. Sure do love him. Yeah. Anybody else? It sure does feel good when your dad's feel you out, though. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> You can't, you cannot give God. I mean, he, he, we show up and we 
and get humble in our hearts and in our mind and, and give him praise, then he pours out a blessing. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Well, I had that uh, friend at work I mentioned a couple times that uh, his wife had that thing in her hand, and she had surgery Friday, and uh, I mean, she's fine, but I guess it didn't go as good as her husband would. So they're going to continue to monitor it and see if it, if it gets any bigger, they'll have to kind of do a more invasive surgery. So mm -hmm. just pray for his family and keep him, just keep him in prayers. God will be blessed. Anybody else? If there's nobody else, uh, Brother Terry, would you lead us in this prayer? Everybody pray. Yeah. Thank you, Father, once again, Lord, we always pray for you. Lord, we 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 pray for you. He could turn the heart of the Lord and seek you out while he had had the time and opportunity to hear upon this earth, Father. Pastor Good Master, you should bless this nation all, folks, the Lord God, wherever you will be with you. We know that this is your scripture, which we've been gathered there, you've been in the midst, and we just ask Lord, that you be with the us, Lord. Bless them, we're alone. We call upon you, Lord, when we're together, we call upon you, Father, we know that your eyes are upon us, and your ears hear our cry. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers that you've answered. We ask, Lord God, that you continue to bless those that are sick and afflicted and struggling with heart and mind, but most of all, Lord God, that you bless those that don't know that it's hard to finish their sins, that you work about their hearts, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God, that they can see that all that is done that you've done for us upon the tree of the cross, out of love, Lord God, that we might turn from our wicked ways and seek you out while we have time and space and opportunity, Father. We thank you so much, Lord, for all that you've been done for us and that you've kept us throughout the troubles and trials and the highs and the lows in our lives, Lord. You've always been there for us. We thank you so much, Father, and ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. And amen. 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 Thank you. My brother Jeff, it's already been a wonderful place to be here this evening. We thank God for that. You all be continue to be in much prayer, and if the Lord will put that on my mind, that I get the creature, as I've often said, out of the way, <clears throat> and the things that the Lord has showed me in His Scriptures that He can bring it forth, and in the way that He needs to bring forth, Brother Bill, that Bless the Lord. church can be edified. That's why we're come together, the church, to get edified. Well, what that mean? That means to be fed. And I love that song Sister Bonnie sings uh, from the table that ever stays full. And drink from that fountain that never runs dry. And then when this time is over, go to that country that's called heaven where we never shall die. That's why we're Christian men and women, Brother Tommy, to gather together this evening to give the Lord praise and glory and honor. And that he could just use us just for a little while here to bring forth his message. And not only the church be edified, but those that's on the outside can hear word whereby they can be saved. And uh this word in which we preach, it is my thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, the word of faith. Yeah. So he has put a little portion, Brother Bruce, of faith in every individual that's ever born and comes to the age of accountability right in their heart. Yeah. And it's up to them, Brother Chris, to turn that key of faith and unlock it to them. Uh, when this word comes forth, it, it agrees with what God's already got placed down in the human body that we need. And I think everybody in the whole world, even the ones that claim to be atheists, I really do believe that they know hearts of hearts right down deep inside that they need a Savior. One day after a while, as Brother Tommy preached you all back, 
God is going to get glory from every individual that's ever walked upon this earth as yeah. footstool. On that last day when we all are called up, and we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be changed in the moment of a twinkle in the eye, and be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and forever be with the Lord. Amen. Now he's talking to the church there. Yes. The ones that's in the ground, and the ones that's walking around, the folk right now, just like I mean, if he comes right now, Brother John, that we'll be changed in a moment of a twinkle in the eye. And we won't prevent them which are in the ground. But why would we want to prevent a Christian? They ain't talking about that part. We know what awaits those that don't that's not Christians, Brother Terry. Yeah. And so if we could, we would prevent them from coming forward because we know that just like it says there, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The Son of Man hath power upon this earth to forgive sins. Man, that's some strong, solid doctrine that we can live. Not only live here with but live forever with yeah, it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Think about that, how wonderful that is. I think about, and some of these things comes to my mind, and, and like I said, Christian, man, we all pray that God will just refine this. A lot of times we think about things, but God can get a hold of it, Brother James, and he can make it powerful, and he can make it good if it's his will, and that's what we hope that he does this evening, because his word, Brother Terry, that's mixed with that holy divine spirit, when it goes out, it's like he told Isaiah a long time ago. He said, I'm going to send my word out. Word that I please. And it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish one unto that I send. Amen. Now, his word was made flesh yes. and dwelt among us. He sent him out, didn't he? Yes. And I'm telling you that same word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. And they said, we beheld his glory as the only begotten Son of God full of grace and truth. Amen. That same Jesus is here inside of us. Yes. And he's still sending him out. He's the preacher. That's why I say, Brother Terry, if you get the preacher out of the way, right. and let him bring forth that message that he wants to bring, that the church can be edified, not from me, but from him, and that those that's on the outside can hear words of his word that's got life in it, yeah. and, and that they can turn their life around and come to the Lord. And their faith believing, like all of us came a long time ago. Think about that. Right. So we think about old Nicodemus. Now, he was one of these fellers that was on the Sanhedrin court. That's what it was called, if you study history. And he had a power and authority among the people at that time. And the rest of them didn't want to have nothing to do with Jesus that I could read about. There might have been a few that it didn't mention that, that was curious about the Lord. But this man was more than curious that he come by night because of fear of the Jews. Yeah the ones that he was in fellowship with, because they didn't want to have nothing to do with this man called Jesus. They, they said, this, this brand new doctrine here is going to take everything that we've got away from us. It sure was, and it sure did. <laughs> and, and, and in spite of what they set forth, it still happened just the way the Lord planned it from the beginning. So here comes Nicodemus to the Lord by night, and, and the Lord knows he's coming. Before the world was, he knows he's coming. He knows the heart of every man and woman since he knows that there's one here tonight that's going to come and give their life to the Lord before they ever do. Look how long-suffering and patient God is with all of us that there's some, and he even speaks about it, Brother Jeff in the old scriptures, that some of them will be a hundred years old and be a child. What's he talking about? Talking about born again of the Holy Divine Spirit and become a child of God at a hundred years old. Think about that. You mean he's that long-suffering and patient? Yeah, but I'm going to tell you tonight, don't put your hopes in what your life is because it's like a vapor. You come forth for a little while and it's cut down, and you don't know when that's going to happen. There's no promise of tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Now is the accepted time. That means when that spirit begins to deal with us, that's when we need to start moving out. Now, it was a while that I, I just kept putting it off and putting it off, and it was eating me alive, and I know that I was a lost man. And if I died, I was going to go to a devil's hell. And I kept putting it off. Don't know why. I just know that I was hanging on to the things of the world, but I need to let it loose. Yes. That's the next one that has to do the same thing. Yes. 
Right. Turn it all loose. It ain't nothing out there worth hanging on to. Yeah. Turn your life yeah. over to the Lord and you'll have manifold blessings in this life. Yeah. Everlasting life to come when life is over. So here he comes. And he comes to the Lord and he said, Hey, Rabbi, right. I know that thou come from God. And that thou art a teacher. I, for no man could do these miracles. And that I saw you do, except God be with you. But look what kind of faith he had. He knew God was with him. He knew he was a great prophet. How that God had raised up. But he didn't know at that time, Brother Bruce, that he was a son of God. He didn't know at that time that he was the Messiah. He didn't know at that time that he was the Savior of the world. But he wanted to find out more about it. Why are you here this evening, lost man and lost woman? I know why you're here. You want to know more about the Messiah, how the Savior, and his name is Jesus. Amen. If you didn't want to know more about him, you won't be here. That's right, right. When I was going to church as a young man before I gave my life to the Lord, I dreaded it because I know he'd cut me all to pieces every time. But I wanted to know more about the Messiah. Want to know more about the Savior. <laughs> Want to get a little closer to the Lord. I didn't even know the scripture at that time. God said, draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. He had placed his word and spirit down inside of me. And even though I didn't know that word, and by speaking with my mouth, I could sure feel it. Yeah. Not it was his. It's got life in it, Brother Chris. Yes. So here he comes. I know that thou art a teacher that sent from God for no man could do these miracles, except God be with you. Amen. He didn't ask the Lord no question. Lost man, lost woman. You don't have to ask the Lord a question. He already knows what you need. And he'll supply it if you open up your heart's door and let him come in. Amen. Think about that. Amen. So he says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, barely, barely, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see you the kingdom of God. You mean to tell me the kingdom of God was there already? The Lord brought it with him. He was starting to set it up right then and there. It's not yet to come. It's already here. It's spiritual. He said the kingdom of God is within you. Yes. To the man and woman that believes, he sets up that kingdom right inside of us. And we're all a part of it. And it's a part of us. Yes. No wonder he taught the apostles going into all the world and preach my kingdom and to whosoever believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. What's the beginning of the kingdom? His name is Jesus. Amen. He's the one who brought it. He's the one who set it up. He's the head of it. He's still sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession on our behalf. Everyone that comes into this kingdom is going to get to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. If, there's a great big little word, if we'll keep on keeping on. Yeah. Jesus said, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yes. So here Jesus is yeah. telling me, I can see that old man. I thought about how that I respond to things that I don't understand. Yeah. A lot of times I lay my hand on my old bald head and I rub the head. I think, yeah. what in the world does that mean? I know that means something glorious when I'm studying, Brother Bill. I'm sure you do the same thing. You're bald too. So, we're <laughs> 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 trying to figure it out. Think how good that God is and how long suffering he is. Good. So, here's Nicodemus trying to figure it out. How in the world, I'm an old man. How can I be born again? Right. Can I enter into my mother's womb and be born? It's a puzzle to me. It's a puzzle to me. It's like a carnal minded. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not being born of the flesh called Jesus said. And that which is born of flesh is flesh. If we was born of the flesh a thousand times, we'd still be flesh. If we had a thousand lives to live. My wife used to sing that song, I'd give them all to the Lord. I think about it. But we'd still die those thousand times if we was born of the flesh. But I'm telling you, he was talking about that which is born of spirit is spirit. And if we're born of that spirit of wholeness of God, I will live forever if we'll do what the Lord told us to do. Yeah. Yeah. And we can. The devil will tell our people, you can't do that. He told me that, Brother Thomas. He said, there ain't no way you can do that. You know how you got sin in you. And you know you can't keep from sin. By ourselves, we cannot. I'm telling you, the great one, when he takes up his old brother Chris, as you well know, and I do too, we can do it. Yes. Because the Lord is greater than in us than he that's in the world. Who's in the world? He's a liar and the father of it. 
That's the old devil. That John Swain used to say, the old Buddha man going to and fro in the earth and up and down the earth, seeking whom he may devour. He's the one that's got the lies. He's the one that's keeping our people out in the world of sin. Amen. But I'm telling you, if you'll turn loose of all those lies and just accept the true word of the living God, it's laying right out in front of you. It's pure and clean. And if you'll believe it and move out on it, you'll have life. He began to, once he told him, said, the born of the Spirit is the Spirit. He, he began to use an example there. He said, man, a lot of times I'll look out and the wind blowing, you know, at the house, see them leaves are moving about, you know, can't see that wind. He said, the wind bluff where it listens. What's that mean? Where it wants to. You can't see where it comes from. You can't see where it goes to. But you can hear the sound of it. And the harder that wind blows, the more you can hear the sound of it. Still can't tell where it comes from or where it goes. But you can hear the sound of it. And Brother Roger Manor preaches, and it's right. You can see the effects of it. Yes. Yeah. When that wind's blowing and them old leaves, man, they're doing this. All those little hands out on those arms of them trees. Mm -hmm. saying glory to God. Yeah. Think about that. It's so a wonder that we'll throw our hands up and these little leaves start to doing this. Say, glory to God. We're a tree and we better be bringing forth good fruit, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Good trees, Christian men and women. Bad trees bringing forth bad fruit. God ain't pleased with that. Yeah. God's pleased with good fruits. How do we get good fruit? Give our life to the Lord and do what he said to do and it's good fruits. Yeah. Once in a while we'll have an old straggly limb come out on us that ain't no good. We think that it's right, and there's ways that seem right unto a man, then those ways are dead. He'll have to trim that off of yeah. it. Yeah. Click. Oh my goodness, that hurts. Hurts your flesh, don't it? Yeah. Right. Get rid of it. Yeah. Don't let nothing come between you and God. Let the Lord click you. Yeah. Man, I don't, you know, a man don't like to be chastised when he's going through that, what the scripture says. That's getting clipped. Yeah. Put in place. But when it's over with. Bring it forth peaceful fruits. Yeah. Man, Brother Tommy, we can bring forth more fruits when we're pruned, can't we? And that's what we want. The Lord, the ones that he loves, he chastises. That's right. This is not all peaches and cream right now. This is the this is the battlefield. Yeah. And we're in a battle of Armageddon already. Yeah. And we're fighting for our own life. And we're fighting, Brother Thomas, for everybody else's life that will hear the word of God and give their life to the Lord. Yeah. It's what we're fighting for. That's right. And in any kind of battle, sometimes a man that's fighting and he's out on the front, as Roger Minor sings that song. Yeah. Man, I dread that sometimes. You'll fall flat in your face because it gets rough. But the Lord's right there, man. He'll pick you up. That's yeah. Yeah, man. You can do better than that next time, son. Yeah. We learn from our mistakes, yeah. don't we? Yeah. The devil will say, oh, you've messed up. Now you're going to go to hell, Christian man. Well, that's a lie. Yeah. We have an advocate with the Father, which is Christ Jesus, which is just Amen. to forgive us of every sin. Yes. So there's no excuse, are there? No, no. We get in this good way. We can stay in it if we'll do what the Lord said. And when we mess up, he'll forgive us. Dust us off, clip us a little bit, we can go on our way rejoicing. Right. Get back in the game. Good One day after a while, brother, ain't gonna be no more clipping. We're gonna have a glorified body like an under his. Ain't no more sin in it. No. Man, that's what I'm wanting, Bill. Yeah. I can't imagine the glory of that. No. But I'm telling you, just thinking about it, it makes me excited. Yeah. Yeah. They're singing a little bit about this here. Makes me excited. Don't, don't, don't the tear starts flowing out of this creature. Why? Because we know it's real. The wind bloweth where it lifts, and you can't see where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone that's born of the Holy and the divine Spirit of the living God. We've got that wind right down the side of us. Yeah. Some of the friends said, yeah, you sure are windy. Yeah, you've got it. Mm -hmm. Makes me happy, brother. Yeah. Makes, me happy. Makes me happy. You know what? When I was young, and I used to, and I get excited hearing the good gospel songs or a good message that was preached when I was younger. I asked Brother Don Maffer about that the other day. I was just wondering about it. I said, Don, I don't react to those things that I once did. And he said, son, you've got older. You've got tougher in the gospel. 
And I thought, well, if he's 96 years old, he ought to know. <laughs> you want to be dead? But I used to just shout to the top of my mind, Brother Tom, when I first got to church. Get excited. I would tell you, that wind would come out and it was just glory hallelujah. So then he says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, he's still, he's still wondering. God, he wants everybody to know exactly how God works. Barely, barely, I say unto thee, Nicodemus, he's saying it to all of us, except a man be born to the water, brother Jeff, and of the spirit of the living God, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That means when you turn your whole life over to the Lord, when that still small voice, comes down inside of you and lets you know that you're a lost man or a lost woman, that you want to have a Savior, and His name is Jesus, then you've got to walk the aisle and say, with your mouth I confess that Jesus has forgiven me of my sins. They don't even have to say that the way we've got it fixed here in Bethlehem. We ask them, say, do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ? We do. We ask Him. Do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ forgive you of your sins? I said, yeah. I've never heard anybody say no. <laughs> and you're willing to follow him all the days of your life, according to the old King James Version of the New Testament. Yeah. Man, I like to, I like to say that because this is, look how simple God made it. Right out front. All that's in favor of receiving this, our brother or sister, after legally been baptized, or is that baptism, ain't it? Yes. To be buried with Christ into his death and raised up with Christ in newness of life. A new creature. That's what he told us to do. We don't have to understand all that, Brother Tommy, but we need to believe it and do it because that's what the Lord said. And the Lord, he, he done it himself. He's the great teacher. He come to John Baptist and said, John baptized me. Oh, Lord, he said. It's me. I, John said, I need to be baptized you, Lord. Now, John... Suffered to be so. He, he cometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Fulfill all righteousness. Whatever God says to do, do it. God's telling him to do it. And you know what John done? He done it. He took our Savior that needed it not, but he's teaching us what we need to do. Down to Jordan's River, we've got one right down yonder, real close by, and just dumped him. Head years, as the old times used to say, submerged him into the death of Christ. And raised him up in the life of Christ. The new creature in Christ Jesus. And that's why he did. That's why he teached it. That's, that's Christ going down. He goes down with us, don't he? Yes. And he comes up with us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened after he come up? Now I'm switching gears. I'll try to get back to the other man. There was a voice from heaven's country. Did everybody hear it? It was thunder to some of them. Yeah. Yeah. But to the one it was meant for, and to us it's written down that he actually said words. Yeah. Not all night, it sounded like thunder. Yeah. To those that I believe, believe not. <clears throat> oh, John Baptist, he'd done already been told. He said, now, John, you'll know the Christ. Because there's going to be a voice from heaven's country, and there's going to be a dove that comes down, and a boat sits right down on Christ, and a boat's there, and that dove is going to have a Holy Ghost in it. You'll know that he's the Messiah. You'll know. When he raised him straight up, there was a voice from heaven's country. Oh, God. Oh, no powerful God I am. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Why was he pleased with it? Because he began to teach the word of God. Manifested in his body and in his words. If we just say it in words and don't move out on it, brother. Hey, faith without works is dead being alone. Man, oh man, if we put works with it. What is that first works? I said there a while ago. Once that we believe we have faith in this, come and say, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Confess it. Boy, he made it simple, didn't he? Yes. Do you believe so much that you'll be buried with Christ into yes. his death? Yeah, man. Yes. We raised up with Christ, walking in newness of life. Think about that. Born to you. Jesus done that for us. Amen. Every bit of it. All yeah. these good and perfect gifts coming down from the Father of lights. And come through his son Jesus. There is no greater name than at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. Every tongue should confess. Or is that confession name? Yeah. That he is the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And there's 
coming a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And that's what I said there a while ago, Brother Jeff, that God's going to get glory from everybody one day after a while. These sinners that just puts it off and puts it off, laying in the ground, there's lots of them, Brother Mike's in the ground tonight. Yeah. More than we can even know. They're going to be raised up on that day, scared to death, knees knocking. And they're going to confess that there is the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God. And they're going to bow the knee. I've had some of my buddies, sinners. Me and I ain't going to bow my knee, brother. That's so funny, ain't it? We're talking about God. When God said it's going to be, Brother Chris, that's what it's going to be, Brother Tommy. It's going to be. And ain't nobody's got enough power, sis, to keep from doing what God has told them to do. He's going to get glory from them. Boy, it's going to be too late for them for yeah. them to be able to get glory themselves. No reward. Right now, it's the glory for yourselves. You mean we can have glory? That's what we've got. Mm-hmm. First down in the inside, glorified. Okay. Then on the outside, one day after a while. What is that glory? Hebrews says, come on. That's the same name. Just in a different language. But the Hebrews throwing their hand and say, come on, come on. That's like us, brother. Just saying, glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Think about that. What's that mean? It means physical and spiritual. But did God make all the physical things that's all, that can be seen with eyes and touched with hands? Yeah. Everything that's been made, God made it. Yes. And nothing was made that God didn't make. Think about that. That's a natural and a spiritual. So that glory is both spiritual and natural. You mean when we're baptized with the Lord that we got both of them? No. Right. No, we got the spiritual first. Right. Glory right down the side. Because the Lord's right there. Right. One day after a while, we'll keep on keeping on. Do what he said. Our outward body be glorified also. There you go. What else the glory means? That glorified. The highest achievement that anybody can ever reach the highest achievement that anybody could ever reach, there ain't nothing more higher than it, nothing more important than it. To get glory from God is to get God that dwells down inside of us. Because he is, and here's another meaning of it, the weight and the worth there. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing can outweigh God. All, all the gold of Fort Knox are in all the world and outweigh the worth of God. Glory unto the Lamb of God. Glory unto the great God I am. He's worthy, eh? Yes. He's worthy of praise and glory and honor. This is the quietest time that we'll ever have here, Brother Chris. We have him glorified bodies. Mm-hmm. Man, I've pictured when I get to go to heaven, Brother Paul, and Paul, again like a possum. He's done bad from the same thing. <laughs> that glorified body, man, in heaven's country, above my running down Gold Street. Said I've made it home. I'm gonna be here forever. Man, I feel good. Better than I ever felt before. Yes. Look here, I can fly. <laughs> that's that's I know fables, brother. That's the real thing. Yeah. A celestial being that can walk out through solid matter. Can't understand that. Jesus done it. Yeah, right. 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 Wanna have a body just like his? What's so hard to believe about anything like that? My little boys and I was raising them up and I was telling them about some of these things. Man, they're little minds, you know. Superheroes, you know. <laughs> Said, we'll be like Superman, won't we, Daddy? <laughs> I still remember that. Man, that was the best thing I could hear from them. They understood what I was talking about. I said, yeah. I said, sure, be the Lord in the air. Don't have to have no wings. This is real. This is not fables. It's not make-believe. The devil would cause people to... Thank that this is all stable. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Brother Bill, that all in Scripture from the beginning of Genesis, between the Revelation, lines up perfect, and they were written in thousands of years separation, directed by the same God and different men, and it lines up perfect. Amen. Impossibility for man to do. They can't even do it in this day and time. No, no. Can't tell the weather. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's the God in whom we serve. Yeah, thank you, man. Except a man be born again of the water 
No, the spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's right, right. Faith comes by hearing. And not just hear anything, but really hear the gospel. Hear the truth of God. God can bring forth that truth in a way that it touches people in the way that he wants it to. I can't, I can't do that. I got to wait on the Lord and let the Spirit direct me and lead and guide me. I think about this other scripture often. I spoke a little bit about it this morning. I love to speak about it in cemetery meetings. Brother Bill well knows. He's been there. Talking about little Lazarus. Wonderful true story. Yeah, yeah. God's purpose in sending his son Jesus here was to show the world that he's going to give his son power to forgive sins, uh, to be able to raise those that are dead to a lively, brand new hope spiritually first, and then a resurrection of the natural, uh, to live forever with a glorified body. And the Lord well taught that while he was here, before he is the resurrection, little Lazarus, one that he loved dearly, what he said about the scripture, let a chapter of the book of John. Yeah. Love Lazarus, love yeah. Martha, love Mary. Very much Jesus did. Did he just love them? He loves everybody the same. The great God I am, look how much he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever I would believe in him should not perish, I but have everlasting life. To the man that believes that it should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. Woman too. Which says man's talking about mankind. Right. So little Martha and Mary sent a message to the Lord about Lazarus. Mm-hmm. Brother Lazarus is sick real bad. The Lord wants you to come and touch him. They had faith in the Lord that he could heal him. Yeah. He bad off. Yeah. Was that accident that he was bad off, Thomas? No, no man, that's directed of God. Do you mean to tell me that sometimes God people get sick for a purpose? Yes. Yeah, man. All things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I had to accept that with my wife, Brother Bill. Greater purpose there than what I can even see. God knows. I don't. We don't see everything and we don't know everything, but we trust in what God has said and we know it's right. right. It takes a little while, sis, to get to our mind to where we'll accept some of the things. But God's long-suffering and patient with all of us Christian men and women. He don't expect us to just be perfect all the time, Brother Bill. We're not perfect. He told us to strive for perfection. He didn't say be perfect. He said strive for it. Work towards the goal of that. And when he comes again, he'll make us perfect because he's working towards that goal. He's a heart searcher, ain't he? He's a heart reader. He knows when we're wanting to do right and good. So here the message comes to Jesus. And Jesus, he just stayed right where he was at with his apostle uh, for two days. I thought you said that he loved Lazarus. Oh, yeah, he loves him real good. He knows what's best for all of us for the purpose yeah. of salvation. It was his thing. So he stayed there for two days. You know what I think them old apostles thought, Brother James? Because they said this. When the Lord finally said two days later, let's go to Judea. Oh, my goodness, Lord, they said to him. said, well, the people of Judea, the Jews, they, they sought to sit, they sought to kill your life out. Yeah. They seek your life. They want to kill you. And you're wanting to go back there? So they probably thought, Brother Bill, in their mind, the reason why Jesus stayed here for two days, he got the message that his friend that he loves, Lazarus, is sick. He's staying here because he's afraid to go there. You reckon that's the carnal mind of the people yeah, where they're dying? Yeah, it was. Man, that's a bad mistake, wasn't it? Yeah. So when Jesus said, time to go to Judea, time. Oh, Lord, let's not go there. They saw your life. Hey, what did the Lord say? Is there not 12 hours in the day? Yeah. If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Because the light of this world will show you where you go. Yeah. But if you walk in the night in the darkness, you'll stumble and fall. What's he saying? That's more than natural, Brother Bill. He's saying, let's be up and about the Father's business. Whatever he tells us to do, we are walking in the light. Yes. He's fixing to walk in the light there. Boy, he's doing what the Father told him to do, wasn't he? <laughs> if I got around and don't do what the Father said, I'll be a walking in darkness, and then I'm going to fall. Stumble. 
He was teaching us by his own actions what he was doing there, Brother Bill. Go follow, he's going to follow the Father. What are we going to do? We're going to follow Jesus, ain't we? Yeah. Yes. Father tells Jesus what to do. There's a chain of command, ain't it? Jesus tells us what to do. If we'll follow him, he'll be just right. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be good. We'll have manifold blessings in this life, everlasting life to come, when life's over. If he read a big little word. Amen. So here they're sitting out, headed towards Judea. <laughs> and the Lord says to them on the way, Lazarus sleeping. Man, they thought, Brother Mike, that's all right. You know, man, you real sick when he gets to where he feels good enough to sleep, he do better. That's what they said to him, wasn't it? And the Lord looked at him and said, I want to explain this exactly to you. Lazarus is dead. I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. That's the reason why he wasn't there, brother. They might believe that he was truly the Messiah, the son of a living God. They was fixing to see something that had never been done before. Right. Yeah. And it was nothing to the Lord. Just with a word. Okay. He's going to do it again to everybody that's in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Think of the power of God that he spoke everything into existence yeah. that exists. Surely he can say come back alive. Yeah. Right. So what he's created here, think about that. Man, that makes me feel good, Brother James. Though we might lay in the ground and turn into dust, and the Lord going to speak to the sleeping dust. I like how he says sleeping dust. Yeah, yeah. Because that means we've got life in us, and we're going to come back. Yeah. Well, here he's going. He said, I'm glad for your sakes I was not there to the yeah. intent that you might believe. So he gets down there, and here come Martha running out. Shoo, Lord. Shoo, Lord. If you'd have been here, Oh, if you'd only been here, Lord. My brother Lazarus had not died. That's pretty good faith, ain't it, Brother Thomas? Yes, Think about it. She'd seen some miracles in the time that she, she'd been around the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mary and Lazarus both, a bunch of people did. The witness of the miracle. Nicodemus, the one I talk about, he come to him because he knows that he was sent from God. These other people know that he was from God, but he wants them to know more that he's come from God. And he's more than a teacher. And he's more than a prophet. He's the Messiah. Yeah. One that was promised of the Savior to come. And there ain't going to be another, Brother Chris. We know that, don't we? Yes. He wanted them to one know that. One only. Yeah. Martha comes and says, Oh, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother Lazarus had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you ask the Father, he shall grant it to you. Yeah. The Lord said something simple there to him. It's that was the Lord. Yeah. Oh, he shall rise again. He fixed to raise him up. She didn't know a thing about it. You know, we don't know who he's going to raise up this evening. There's somebody here that's hearing the gospel down in their heart that the Lord's going to raise up. Yeah. Man, that makes me feel good. That excites me. Spirit's here. I can feel it. Strong. Yeah. 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 Raise somebody up from a dead state to a lively hope in Christ Jesus. Oh, he'll rise again. She had faith in She said, oh, Lord, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection <laughs> in the last day. She's putting it out there, wasn't she? Yeah. That's what we're putting it out there in the natural. It's about to happen. It's about to happen, it's brother. About to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know my brother Lazarus is going to rise again in the last day in the resurrection. Jesus said, I am. I like that, don't you? That means he's God Almighty. I am that I am. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. At the moment that he wants to resurrect somebody, I, from a dead state to a lively hope, it's in the power of God. I, God added to the church daily as should be saved. Amen. Who should be saved? A man or woman that believes with all their heart. That Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. How good is that? Amen. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Amen. Everybody here is alive in a natural state. I think. <laughs> I 
whosoever liveth in natural state and believeth in me shall never die. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him or her. You mean it's already the judgment of God is already abiding on them? That's what scared me to death, Brother Bill. I'm a lost man and I need to save you. The judgment was already abiding on me that I was going to go to hell when I die. That's for every individual, Bill, that's upon this earth that don't know the Lord right down as part of remission of sin in their heart. It abideth on them, and they may have the last breath today, and then it's sealed, Brother Thomas. Yeah, if that right. ain't enough to scare a feller, well, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what in the world will. Be eternally lost, judged, a lost man or a lost woman. Yeah. No more hope. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Christian men and women, you believe that, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's why we're here this evening. We believe in him. We've come alive down on the inside, Sister Tony. And I'm telling you that the promises of God will keep us alive because we'll follow him. And one day after a while, even the creature itself shall be delivered. Delivered from work, From a dead state to eternal life. Now, Charlie, have you ever seen that? Don't have to. The Lord wrote it down in the scriptures in the book of John. He's fixing to do it. Yeah, and I know. believe it. I do too. And regardless if I anybody know. else don't believe it, it still happened just that way. Amen. Lost people don't believe that. If they truly believed, they'd come run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you heard my grandpa Jess asked my daddy when he was a date and my mommy, Charlie, they said that's a dinner table. You believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God? I sure do, he said. No, you don't. That's what he said to him. I mean, right off, right from mom. Mom, she said, I got nervous. <laughs> My dad gonna line him up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. What do you mean? Jess, I don't. He said, if you truly believed, you'd be a Christian. Yep, he told him the truth. Man, he told him the truth, didn't yes. he? I'm telling yes. you, chop clean down inside. You know, daddy never did forget that. And it stayed right on his mind and fair right on his mind until he gave his life to the Lord. You mean a few words like that will make a difference? You ain't a kid, and the truth will set you free if you'll believe in it. Yes. If you'll believe the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll set you free. Jesus said, when you're free in me, you're free indeed. Now think about that. You know what the scripture said then? I can't help but think, Brother Chris, that. That Spirit of God just reached right down inside little Martha. Because he knows his people, man. He knows us better than Martha said. Yes. Martha, you go in secretly and tell Mary that I'm not sure talking for. Now, he don't say that the Lord said that to her. But that's what she done. And it was just right. What do you mean it's just right? There was a bunch of Jews in there, and some of them were so hard-headed, just like I was at one time. That if they'd have known Jesus was out there, they wouldn't have come out to him. They didn't want nothing to do with him. It's just like the world right now. They don't want nothing to do with him. If we put on a big to-do or something or other, or that somebody might kind of win some money or a prize or something or other, they'll come out. and they'll come out, man. Yeah. And then somebody's got Jesus in them. Glory to the Lamb of God. Man, they don't want to hear that. No. We didn't come here for that. We come here for the gifts. Lord knows her heart, did it? Yes. She goes in secretly and tells Mary, says, Mary, the Lord is out there. Jesus is out there. He's calling for you. Man, she got this. Here she's going. <laughs> and all those Jews that had traveled 15 furlongs away from where they lived there, they got up, every one of them did, and followed her. Let's go out. She's going to the grave. She's going to weep, son. Let's go out and come. Okay. They had a good thought in mind, didn't they? Yeah. God knows people, don't he? And they all come out, and here they was face to face with Jesus. No doubt some of them, oh my goodness, if I no doubt I'd have stayed in the house. Yeah. That's the way the world is, sis. We're just, we're just stay out here. We don't want nothing to do with, with the things of the Lord. Yeah. Big difference between those that love the Lord, yeah. those that don't want, don't want to hear the word of God, yeah. don't want nothing to do with God or His Son. 
Big difference. We see that all the time, don't we? Yes. It's right around us. It was then, wasn't it? Yes. And here they all come out. Little Mary. I'm a little one. Boy, you can read about her washing the Savior's feet with her tears. Yeah. Drying with her hair. That precious ointment she just poured on his head, on his feet. And just the smell of that sweet savor in that house. Representing the spirit of a living God that's in us. And when we pray, and that spirit goes up and it's sweet. It's sweet in the nostrils of God. You know, he's got a vessel in heaven's country that holds all of our prayers. I can just see him sometimes. Says, Open that little bit up. Man, that's sweet. That's the sweetest I've ever felt. You know what our prayers? We know that God is. And we know that he's a reward to those that diligently seek him. Every time we pray, we're seeking him. And faith believe it. And we ain't just coming to him and say, you know, fix my knee. <laughs> We're saying glory and honor and praise unto you. Thank you for all your blessings that you've already done for us. Thank you for what you Thank said you're going to do for us. Yeah. One day after a while, we got that glorified body. Ain't no bigger than one busted knees up yonder. We're going to feel better than we ever felt before the glorified body. We want people to know the real thing yeah. of what God has offered to all people. Yeah. Eternal life, peace, joy, and happiness. The truth. Yeah. And here they, here she comes. Little Mary just fell at his feet, and just weeping, crying. Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother Lazarus had not died. She was all standing watching. Boy, she's a crying. Some of them was crying. You mean some of them was already crying? Yeah, they was. We had compassion towards one another. Yeah. Even people that's lost has a little compassion. If they don't, I don't believe they can be saved then without some compassion. We read about a rich man didn't have no compassion. He ended up in hell, didn't he? Not because of the money. He didn't have no compassion. No, compassion. no mercy for nobody. It's all about I this and I that. God's people is not, I mean, God's not pleased with, with people like that. But he'll still save them if they'll get away from I this and I that and turn it over and say, Lord, it's all about you. Yeah. So here, Jesus is looking around and they're weeping and Mary's weeping, Martha's weeping and it said Jesus wept. Shortest little statement in all the Bible about something that the Lord done there. Short, Jesus wept. Two little words, Jesus wept. You know what, Brother Chris, them people that were standing by, you know, when I first read that, you know, you don't pay attention to details. You know, young man, I thought, you know, there's probably a few tears come from his eyes, you know, some pain. Oh my goodness sakes. Them Jews even said, I mean, he wrote down, he had wrote down, John, write this down for people to understand. The Jews that hardly didn't have no compassion at all said, look, look how that he loved Lazarus. He was a really a weeping. He was boo-hooing. Yes. He was coming with it. He wasn't ashamed to show his emotions and his feelings. There's another teacher, ain't mm -hmm. Teaching us, don't be ashamed of what I put down in you. That when you feel good with a good song going, let the tears flow. Yeah. If the Spirit needs you to hold your hand up, say glory to the Lamb of God. Do it. Amen. So he's a showing and teaching once again, ain't he? Great teacher. Great teacher. Yeah. Look how that he loved Lazarus. Could not this man that opened blinded eyes? You mean some of them saw him open blinded eyes? Yeah. Could not this man that opened blinded eyes could have done something for him? Yeah, he could have. He could have kept him from dying. Yes. But then how could that glory be unto the Father and unto the Son? Yeah. What that glory is getting ready to be released. All them that believed. That's the way God gets glory from us. Yeah. When we believe from our heart and testify with our mouth and our actions, God is glorious. His Son is glorious. God gets glory from that. Because we mean it as Christian men and women. It's not a foot off. Mm -hmm. Then he said to him, and he knowed exactly where he was at. He knowed the moment the last breath went out of that man. He knows everything the Lord does. But he done this for us to understand. Yes. Where have you laid? Yeah. What's he saying? He All you Jews come follow me. So here was my shepherd with his own more than he was late. He knows where he was at. Yes. He knows everything. Mm -hmm. So they're all following him out and they're thinking, Look, Thomas, what in the world is he going to do? This man's been dead for four days. He stinketh. Mm -hmm. 
What's he going to do? We got to see this. God knows it's pretty good, that curiosity. They all come out. God wanted them all to hear and see the word of God in action. Yes. That's why they all come out. Right. Come and see. The Lord went over there and here this man that had been dead for four days and he stinks. Wasn't no bottle of food or nothing at that time. Man, they wrapped him in linen, put sweet spices around them, wrapped him some more, put napkins wrapped around their head. Put them in the ground. Like a mummy. Laid him in a tomb and rolled a stone upon him. And in four days, he's a stink. He's rotten, him, brother, going back to the <laughs> dust from which he come. And I'm telling you, a stench, a stink that was awful. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, roll the stone back. There's something for all of us to do, right? The word of God that comes to our mind and heart, when God directs us to preach the word, when he preaches it through us, it's a roll in the stone back. What's that stone we're talking about? It's not a natural stone. It's the old devil that stands between you and salvation. Get him out of the way. And the only thing that gets the devil out of the way is the word of God. Amen. And when the word of God comes through and gets that old stone out of the way, then the sun will shine in that old dead tomb. I did it one time when I was in a tomb. I sure, bars of bones, ready for a devil's hell. And the sun come along. The yeah, sun got it. That natural sun shining in that old tomb when they rolled that stone away. The Lazarus filled. No, he's dead. And I'm telling you, he felt that son of God, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He felt the warmth of the son of God. Here's a dead, didn't know what's going on. Had no idea. Didn't have to. <coughs> you know what Martha said? Now, this is the one that said, whatever that you ask the Lord, God, he'll grant it to you. Faith, man. But you know what she said there? She said, Lord, he stinketh. He's been dead for four days. Now, Martha, did I not say unto you, if you would believe, I report to that, yes. that you would see the glory of God. You mean that glory is fixing to be shown? That glory, Brother Paul, could be shown tonight <coughs> in the moment that they fully believe. Yes. And the glory will take up its abode down inside. Yes. Same glory. Think about that. Give a praise to the God Almighty through His Son Jesus. Amen. How good is that? That's perfect. That's the best that can be offered to all mankind. And the Lord looked upon that little crowd. And He's looking at all of them. In big one. crowd. Tommy, I thought, it don't say that in Scripture. Have you ever been around something that's just rock stinking? Dead. First thing you want to do, sis, is throw something yeah. over your face and get away from it. Yeah. Don't want to breathe that. That's bad stuff, man. That's dead. As boys, we was growing up, brother, Terry used to say, death warmed over. <laughs> Sun shining on it. Cool, you got back. So here's this man, thinking like that. I can just see them old boys thinking, what in the world is, a, is Jesus going to do? Yeah. And you know what he done? I can't help but think, it don't go in detail, but I can't help but think. He wanted them to know that God had sent him. And they all knew where God was. He's up there. Some words. I can't help but think that God, here's Jesus. Holy Father! Hollered it out loud, brother. So look at all here. He, he preaches with it. <laughs> I know that thou always hears me. Always. Thou art hearing me right now, but I'm saying this out loud. That all these that stand around may know that you have sent me and give me power upon this earth how to forgive sin and to raise this man from the dead. And he turned to the old grave and said, Lazarus, come forth. And the stinking man didn't stink no more. Oh, he had And he come out of there, sis, a mummy. Now, if it's the same mummy, no, it don't have to. They wrapped him up, man, and tore those. Here he comes. Like Tim Conway. (laughs) (laughs) He's all binded up in his face, but he's coming out of there. Can you imagine what them fellas was thinking? He knows what he's doing. I've never seen nothing like it. We we don't smell no death, no worse. And this man, we know for sure. We was there when he died. We're here, and we can smell that stink. We know that he was dead and rotten. But he's walking out of the tomb alive. Yeah. Right in front of us. 
You know what it said? This is a surprise to me. He said many of them that come out and viewed that and saw that believed upon the Messiah that he's the Savior of the world. That's what Jesus wanted them to believe, didn't he? Yeah. He didn't say all of them, did he? No. Oh, my That's goodness. Right. You mean to tell me that there's some saw the truth of God yeah. and the power of God? That he had power to forgive sin and raise those that was asleep back to a new life? Yeah. And they didn't believe but it said many of them believed. You know what else the Lord said? He could have done it. He could have run over at Thomas and got the unwound him right in front of him, you know. Took the mat on. He could have done all that. You know what he did? Hey, we've got something to do, don't we? Yes. He said, fellers, loose him and set him free. What's the scripture say? When you're free in me, you're free indeed. How do we, how do we set people free? By the word of God. We begin to unwrap their great place. By the word of God. We first move that stone, which is the devil, out of the way by the word of God. We begin to preach the gospel, follow what God has given us in the spirit to bring forth through our people. That it begins to unwrap the grave clothes. I was a dead man at one time. Didn't know it. Wrapped up in grave clothes right here they are. Headed for the devil's hell. But the word came and it went right down and pricked me in the heart. Changed my mind about God and sin. And I turned my life over to the Lord. And the next one will do the same thing, Brother Jay. Yeah. That's why they believed. Yeah. And on that day, God in heaven was glorified by what they were saying and thinking from their heart that God has truly visited his people, has sent his son to the side. That the old prophets had prophesied. Did they say all that in the scripture? They didn't have to. Didn't have to say that. From their heart, they know that right then that he was the Messiah, the ones that believed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because they had faith, they was accepted of God. And because that they saw the great work of God through the man called Jesus, they glorified Jesus too with words, with thoughts. And, man, how many of them come to hug him? Said, Thou art the Messiah. How many? He don't say it, don't have to. Many did. It said many. Turned their life over. But it said some of them. They didn't believe, Brother Chris. And you know what they started plotting and planning? You reckon that's directed at the old devil? Yes. That's no reckoning to it, but they was. That was him. I knew it. Old devil right there. Oh, no. That ain't the Messiah. He ain't got a king's robe on and a king's crown. He ain't sitting on the throne. That ain't the Messiah. That's the devil talking. You know what they've done, sis? they run to the Pharisees. We're going to try to make them a name. We're going to report this to the Pharisees. Hey, something's got to be done with this man called Jesus. If something ain't done, I'm telling you that which we have, that old covenant, the old thrones that they had and stuff, you know, high society, a big king. It'll be taken away from us of the Romans and will be given to him. That's the way that is a thinking. In a carnal, natural way, like men do that ain't got the Spirit of God in them. <coughs> Was it taken from them anyways? It sure was, but not by the Romans it was. No. The Lord was forewarned. He said, I'm going to leave your house desolate. All of you that don't receive me, I'm going to leave your house desolate. Do you know that them words are still just as powerful and true to this day, Brother Thomas? Every man and woman that don't receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, he leaves that house desolate. What's that mean? No life in it. Never had no life in it. He or she that believeth upon the Son had everlasting life. Look how simple that he made it, Brother Bill. He or she that believeth not upon the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on them. Yeah. And that's right now. When I read that years ago, I still feel that same feeling. I am the resurrection and the life. He's calling, Brother James. Tonight, he's calling to our people once again. And you know what? They may never, ever get another call. He promised in the scriptures, you know as well as I do, he said, I, I have promised to call once. You know why that he's called more to some Brother Terry, I've studied this than others. God's a just God. 
because Christian men and women are praying for our mm -hmm. people. God, don't just call them once. Keep calling. Keep keep drawing. Don't let them die in sin. Let them let them see you. Let them feel your power. Let them hear that still small voice right down the side. We pray that. That's Lord, like extend their life. Safe too. Give them every ample opportunity to turn their life over to you before it's ever last too late. Because we know what's ahead of them if they don't turn their life over to the Lord. And it's horrendous. And it's forever. I've done pretty good this evening and looked that clock till just now. <laughs> Think about the rich man. We get back to him. <coughs> Nicodemus, he was told the truth. How to get in. The best with your mouth. The word with Christ. Water baptism, race up, walk in newness of life. Born again. Not of the corruptible, but of the Spirit of God. Jesus said, I come not to condemn the world, but that the world through me can be saved. Yeah. He didn't come to judge nobody or to condemn it. That already was already condemned. Yeah. In the scripture, he concluded all under sin that he may have mercy upon all. When he died upon the cross, he should have died once and for all. Seeing that, that he died once and for all, uh, Bruce, then all were dead. I was dead at one time. He placed me there. We was all there. But that same Christ that was buried and in three days rose by the power of God, alive forevermore, being the first fruit of the resurrection, he said, because I live all of you that believe it on me can live also. So that same one that placed us all under death, mm -hmm. all in unbelief, that same one can turn it all around when we turn our life over to the Lord. And we'll have life in us. Think about the rich man. Try to just hit on this a little bit and try to shut up here. He didn't go to hell because he was rich. I want people to understand that. God can save anybody, rich, poor. That don't make a bit of difference to the mm -hmm. Lord. Whatever's in, in your way, it might just be one thing between you and God. God wants you to get it out of the way. Ain't nothing. He won't accept nobody if there's something between God and them. A lost person. He won't, I mean, he won't. He's got to get it all out of the way. He'll just turn it all over to the Lord and say, here I am. So here this rich man that he fared sumptuously, he had a purple robe that was a big, that was expensive back there at that time. Shellfish, it purple. They had to kill a whole lot of them shellfish, take that purple, and, and dye that clothing. Man, and if you could afford that, when you walked around that big purple robe, people said, oh, he's rich. I can't afford that. That ain't where it's at. God don't pay attention to stuff like that. It's all right to be rich if you don't plant it and put it first and foremost in your life. That's, that's about that man, that rich man. But he fared sumptuously in this life, had that purple robe on, everything that he needed. Yeah. And Lazarus, a poor man, what was support? You mean God except four people in his house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he except four people in the church, in the kingdom of God. Well, how come how comes God didn't feed him? I've had people ask me some pretty silly questions. For a greater purpose. Paul said to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord, which is far better. It'd be better for me, Brother Terry, right now to drop dead right now mm -hmm. and to be absent from this body and be present with the Lord. Yeah. That kind of excites me. Yeah. <laughs> that could happen. Could. Sure That's the spirit that lets me know this is real. But Paul said that it's better that I stay. It's better for us to stay as Christians. Mm -hmm. We got a work to do, don't we? Yes. We still got a little energy and life in his body, so God wants us to work here for a little while. But this man had a purpose in his life, and he rejoiced even as I speak right now, better than he ever had it before. So God gave him some good food and much more. So this poor man Lazarus, laid at the rich man's gate, desired the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs come along, licked his sores. Y'all have heard the story many times. It said... Lazarus died. This man didn't get him nothing. This man knowed him by name. Walked right by him, no doubt, every day. Yeah. Or every other day, whatever. Knowed him by name. Knowed what he looked like. Knowed his name. Probably complained. I wish the people wouldn't bring him up here and set him at my gate. I have to walk by that every day. I don't want to think about that. 
No compassion. No compassion. There you go. He said it right. So it said, Lazarus died. And God dispatched angels from heaven's country and come down. And does it say his soul? No, but it don't have to. It rightly divides another scripture. You know, we know what happens. To be when that body dies, the spirit leaves it and goes back to God who gave it. We talk about the natural spirit of life. And if it has the Holy Spirit in it, if it's a believer in God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's the scripture. Mm -hmm. So we see the angels come and carry his soul away from that body into the bosom of Abraham. Why did he say that? Because them old boys at that time when Jesus was talking to them, they know Abraham was the father of faith. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get across to them, this is what you got to have to please God. Faith. If you want to be in the bosom of Abraham, in the bosom of faith, you've got to do what the Lord has said and believe it. So yeah. that's why he's talking to them old boys at that time. So here he's in comforted. Now you say the tables have been turned, brother. He once was tormented, had all the evil things the scripture said, but now he got all the good things in heaven's country. Mm -hmm. This is how real it is. Is it going on right now to the soul? It absolutely is. Yes. To the body, the bodies are still laying in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. The natural body is still laying in the ground. He had said, by and by the rich man died also. Mm -hmm. Different story, wasn't it? Yeah, well, by and by the rich man died also, and in hell lifted up his eyes in torments. Desiring one drop of water to his old parts and tongue, because I'm tormented in this flame. Had mine. Change of mind, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Daddy said, tables has turned, he become the better. Yeah. And you know who he's begging to? Father Abraham. Yeah. yeah. God allowed him to see the man that he didn't have no compassion for. Send Lazarus and let him dip his finger in water and pull my parts and tongue. I'm tormented in this flame. You see, you got that exactly right when we was talking about that Bible study. In the natural, yes, absolutely, exactly right. But there's a whole lot more to it than natural. Mm -hmm. Lazarus had spiritual water. Yeah, that's what the drop he needed. And that spiritual water, when he comes down in us, the spirit of the living God, that spiritual water down inside, we become <coughs> a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The man that was in hell know that he had it. Uh -huh. Tim, let him get it. That's something had just a few to it. Be all right. That's the drop he wanted. You know what Father Abraham told him? Told him the truth. Nope. We that are up here would surely come and help you if we could. And you that are there in that torment and that hell would surely leave it and be here with us. But we cannot do that and you can't do it. God has fixed a great gulf between thee and us. <clears throat> No crossing over. To take it over. And I'm telling you, when that man realized what a mess that he was in forever, he started having compassion. Mm -hmm. Too late. He said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my five brethren and warn them to flee from this awful place of torment. I don't want them coming here. That's compassion, brother, ain't it? Yeah. I don't want them to suffer this. And I know they're headed to the same place because they're just like me. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Why did he say Lazarus? Send Lazarus. Because that, that, that old man who's complaining to his brothers, man, I wish they wouldn't send Lazarus. Look, at, look, at, they come and visit, no doubt, you know, and they know Lazarus too, didn't they? And they know that Lazarus died. And probably some of them in their hearts said, man, I'm glad that that fellow's gone. He, I don't have to look at him every day. Ain't that awful how people can get in the frame of mind? Mm -hmm. Now, does he say that in the scripture? They don't have to. That's the way some people that's evil thinks. That's the devil. Mm -hmm. Send Lazarus. They know Lazarus, didn't they? Yeah. They know he died. Send Lazarus and warn them to flee from this place. Oh, <coughs> what did he say? In that second dispensation of time at the end of it, when the Lord was speaking this, they had Moses and the prophets, the law of God, the natural, the old covenant. They had that, and if they would have done what God said in that, they would have been accepted of God in that time. So that's what the Lord is talking about, because it's still in that time, Brother Bill. Yeah. They've got Moses and the prophets. 
And then what did he say? He said, well, they won't listen to him. Why? Because they're just like him. He didn't listen to it. Mm -hmm. He didn't listen to God's word and the old prophet. No. There's better than that has come now. The grace of covenant is here. A prophet that has called the Messiah, his name is Jesus. A greater has risen than all those that was before him. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Father Abraham said, even if one raised from the dead, they will not hear him. In other words, if Lazarus could be brought back to them and he would warn, they'd just say, like them fellows in Jews there, when the other Lazarus raised up, they didn't. Some of them didn't believe. They, they saw, but they still didn't believe. Blindness had come apart, brother. Yeah. Yeah. But some of them was just hard headed Wouldn't accept the truth. Mm. Notice how it said that. Though one raised from the dead, they still will not believe. You know over in the book of Zechariah, I think it's 14, 9, if I think of the chapter and verse, that he said, and this time we're, we got right now, at that end time when it's set up for the grace of heaven, that there would be one Lord, and his name would be called one. His name would be one. So he's just saying right there in that very sentence, he knows what his name was. He knows he was the Messiah, Jesus did. Even if one, one God, raised from the dead, they still will not believe. There's people maybe in this house, I hope not, that will not believe. And that scares me, don't you? Prophet. One has raised from the dead, and his name is Jesus. And he's the sweet Savior, and he's calling. That still small voice is letting every individual that don't know him that they have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the only thing that's going to fix them is the Savior. And he's saying, Come. And the church is saying, Come. And the scripture said, Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. And then it'll be a well of water springing up unto everlasting life to the believer is a receiver of it. I'd like for thankful hearts to come and get another song, and here I went over again. <laughs> come up and get a song, and all they sing. If there's one or more here that is ready for the Lord, ready for the church, come up and let it be known. Tonight can be your night. The Lord loves you. It's not His will that any should perish, but all will come to repent that you will live. God is calling with that still small voice. He ain't going to shake the world to, to draw somebody out of it. He didn't mean, Brother Terry, he just called so meekly and lowly in spirit down inside of me, and I began tears just like right now running down my face at that time. Because I know it was real. And I've done like old Joshua said in the scriptures, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. I come out of the field of sin, and I accepted the Messiah, the Savior. While they sing, if you're ready for the church, you come out of the field of sin. You know, Dad, you say it's not so bad to be a sinner. We've all been there. He said, but it's real bad to stay a sinner when you don't have to. Savior's called. Go ahead and sing. Amen.
song that they sang, if you want this band of Christians, we're praying for you and put one foot in front of the other come to and walk you out and take my hand won't save you, but I'm telling you it goes a long ways in the eyes of God, because God said draw nigh unto me he expects us to start working on the bit, he said draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you Brother Chris said many a time a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step, so you need to place that in your mind and keep it there and keep growing upon that and we'll pray that God will extend your life. That's the best that we can do, Brother Thomas, is pray that God will extend their life and give them more opportunities yeah. to make things right. But tonight could be the very night that they could turn their life over to the Lord. Yeah. God's promises is true. He said, the very hour that you give your whole heart unto me, he said, I'll be found with you. So while they sing, if there be one or more here, that we want this band of Christians to be praying for you, won't you move out and come up and shake your hand? I ain't going to embarrass you. I ain't going to keep you. Go back to your seat. Go ahead and sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a dream I was there when they crucified Jesus. Yeah. And in my dream I saw his great agony. This is for your benefit and to make you a little stronger in the things of God. Let's move out of the way. That soldier was me. Though only a dream. Only a dream. I crucified Jesus. It was my sins he bore. Simon Peter was there, and his heart was so troubled. Yeah. And many that Jesus had touched by the way, they beheld their Lord. Their dream I could see that soldier was me though only a dream only a dream 
Sunday coming up, and we that's a young brother's night. And uh, young brother, stay over and let me talk to you a little bit to see which one of you wants to come and speak. Uh, it's time to get started, and it's a it's a fifth Sunday night, and we use it for the young brother's night. So we hope that we can get some. And if they don't, brother Bruce, that's fine too. Listen, when I first started, I'm telling you that my knees shut together when they first asked me to speak in front of people, and. Uh, and I didn't do it right off the bat. I had to think about it and pray about it for a while. But I'm glad to this day that I, I began to set one foot in front of the other, but for growing in God's grace and all of this truth. So that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, anything else, need, any other point that needs to be spoken about? Yeah, Sunday morning we have the W.T. Minor Cemetery. Me and Brother Jess are going to go up, uh, I believe he said Wednesday. We need mold, clean, fix, try to get it ready. So we have a good time up there. And any of y'all want to come up, we'd be glad to have you. We have a good time. That's in front of the Turkey Creek Church. And what's the name of it? Kelly Knopf. Kelly Knopf, yeah. I, most of the time I can remember. But anyways, right at the top, we got a sign. I put her up in a tree, so you got to kind of raise your head up. We put another one up, somebody stole it. So I told Jess, said, bring me a ladder. They'll have to work for this one. <laughs> so we put it up the tree. You can see it if you just kind of just look a little bit. And come for it. So you see that sign, W.T. Minor Cemetery, you just make right through that fellow's yard, that road, up to a gate, go through the gate, fall right around. It's easy to get to. We have a good time back there. So we'd be glad to have you. Thank you for reminding me of that. And then the next, let's see, yeah, the next Sunday, which is the first, I usually go out to the Stroud Cemetery. Mommy likes to go out there, so I'll have to be thinking about that. But George reminded me of that. We have church here on that morning. If there's not no cemetery, it's in the minute, and they're not already by the bridge. So we have church here on that first Sunday morning. So there I am right in between, Sister Robin, again, whether to go or not, uh, to take Mommy back there. Or, you know, so. Anyways, that's one of our family cemeteries, Stroud Cemetery. We went the past couple of years, so we may not go this year. I don't know. It's important to keep this little church and the spirit going, so we just have to weigh it out. And we'll just pray about it. So, but that's on the first, you know. So that's, that's a couple of weeks away. Any other appointments? Of course, Salem has that Bible study on Friday night, seven o'clock. Brother Jeff, do you? Seven o'clock. Y'all still in the Book of Acts? Yeah. Okay. Good place to go. Any other points? If there's nothing else, uh, Brother Sean, would you give us a dismissal, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to come out, be in your little house of worship, Lord. Be with our friends and family and loved ones, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. We thank you for these uh, messages and words and beautiful songs we have heard this day, Lord. We just pray that they continue to watch over us, continue to guide us, keep us strong in your 
Lay my mind on your favor, Lord, and keep us on that straight and narrow path. And just watch over us and be with us as we go to our homes tonight, Lord. We just pray that uh, to be your will. We'll be able to come together again, Lord, to praise your holy name and to maybe learn just a little more, Lord. For all these blessings, we thank you. And all these prayers we ask in your precious holy son's name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother.